So guys what if Naruto gained the Gura Gura no Mi and had harem in DXD movie? If one were to wander around the woods of Kyoto Japan right now, they would not see the trees of the forest. No, all they would see would be a bunch of trees that spanned for great distances until they were annoyed. However, this was not the case for one Naruto Uzumaki. For the young man, he found himself quite comfortable when he was within the heavily wooded area. It was like a second home to the amnesiac teenager. Oh, you didn't know, you say. Well, that's perfectly fine. Not everything is meant to be perfect in this world. If everything was supposed to be perfect, want and need wouldn't exist and there would be no war or anything related to the bad things that went hand in hand with it. No, young Naruto did not feel the exasperating woes of the world when he was in his small comfort zone, in fact, one would call him an old man if they were to see him now. A perfectly tanned hand reached up into the tree and pulled the fruit off its branch and placed it safely within its basket before reaching up and grasping another one to repeat this process. The young Uzumaki was smiling peacefully as he pulled the pears off the tree and putting them within their basket until they would become full. He only did this once a week to ensure that the trees always had a steady supply, all ten of them, all varieties of fruit, all so succulent and juicy, all so plump in their filling. When he had first discovered this small tree patch of fruit bearing trees, he had been surprised, and he certainly didn't expect to find them with so many fruits either. Now, while you may think that young Naruto is holding the basket with both hands, the truth was he only had one hand, his right hand. You see, Naruto had lost his left arm a few months ago. Around the same time he lost his memory, his left arm had been severed at just below the elbow at around halfway up his forearm and was cauterized by an unknown means, but from what the doctors had told him it was seared shut by the electricity of all things, that was six months ago, he had woken up in the hospital merely a week after being admitted into it with wounds that should have naturally killed any mortal man if they had suffered them, however, Naruto was no mere mortal man. You see, while the young man may not have remembered who he was. Besides a couple of cards with his identity, the truth was far more simple. He was actually from a different world, a different reality. He had been in a fight to end all fights with his best friend and rival, and with their finishing blows, they had torn a hole through space and time itself which sent Naruto through the dimensional gap and into the streets of Kyoto, Japan where he crashed into the pavement and subsequently lost all forms of his memories, when he was brought in by doctors, they were astounded by the rate he was healing from such fatal wounds, but in the end, they allowed his body to heal itself. With his basket now filled he slowly climbed down his ladder he had, found and set it down on the ground before he turned to grab his ladder to move to the next tree beside his beloved pear tree. Up in the loving fruit tree, he had just finished harvesting from. A small fruit shook in the wind, now this fruit was clearly different from its other brethren hanging up in the branches, it was not green like them, though it did have a much sweeter taste than them, and it certainly did not feel as normal as them as well, this fruit was a light blue pear-shaped fruit, like the others, and had a swirling design that covered the entire surface of its surface, and it had a twisted stem that was vastly different than the other fruits as well, a, n, number one. A small pop and a second later, the fruit fell from its branch towards the ground. It bounced off a couple of the other branches along the way. But eventually, it managed to land on the rest of the pears within the basket that had just been harvested by the young blonde. Hearing the fruit fall into the basket caused young Naruto to pause his movement as he placed his ladder back against the tree as he looked to his fruit curiously. Seeing his fruit wasn't being disturbed he went back to moving his ladder until he noticed the blue tinted fruit which once more made him place his ladder back down against the tree. Walking to the basket he picked the unusual looking fruit up and took a look at the strange looking fruit. Sniffed it, and then bit into it, it was like an avalanche of flavor had filled his mouth. While it wasn't his favorite dish by far, it was a close second to the food of the gods. Swallowing the bite he had taken from the fruit he took another and then another, eventually, the entire fruit, including the core, had been devoured by the Uzumaki who sighed in content as he wiped his face free of the fruit's succulent juices, which he promptly licked off his hand. He gave another sigh as he took a deep breath. Ah man, that was so good, ya know, the young man said, his verbal tick coming into play like it usually did after he spoke sometimes. What Naruto didn't know, was that he had eaten a special fruit. A fruit that had been forgotten by mankind for thousands of years. It was a test run for what would become the normal weapons for those involved in the supernatural. What Naruto had in fact eaten, was a devil fruit, but this devil fruit was no ordinary devil fruit. This devil fruit was the most powerful of its class and was no weaker than its Logia class elemental brethren, 
It was the paramesha type devil fruit known as the Gura Gura no Mi which roughly translated to either sound of shaking, though that was highly unlikely, or to be more specific quake quake fruit, as was the correct pronunciation for the powerful fruit, from when all the others existed. With the rest of his fruit gathered, the blonde-haired blonde walked to his bicycle and loaded the fruit into a large wagon tied to the back. Naruto looked up to the sun, his twin-colored orbs of violet and blue singing in joy oh what is that, you didn't know he had two different colored eyes. You say, yes, Naruto was indeed heterochromatic, as in he had two different colored irises, which was indeed rare in people, people, mainly the young women, commented that he had lovely eyes, while the men said they held some kind of power within them. Though the young men never knew they were wrong as it was just a normal eye, back to the story, as he felt the light fall upon him, he then climbed onto his transportation and went home, when tomorrow came, he would take the fruit baskets up to the school for a small payment of their actual price and would, in turn, pay his bills. When the dawn of the morning came, and Saul shined his light down on the world Naruto woke up with a stretch. Well with as much of a stretch as he could get. He was still quite hurt even now, his body may have healed. But his body still ached on occasion, climbing out of his bed the blonde went through his usual morning routine of brushing his teeth before showering and making a quick breakfast before he changed into his school uniform. With his routine finished, he began to load his gathered produce and place it in the wagon, before he then climbed on and made his way towards the school, he gave out a couple of fruit to a few people he knew like his neighbors the Hyodo family who he usually gave a bag of ten to, for helping him so much. Now that wasn't to say he liked their son, of course. He respected the young teen in his own right, but at school. He utterly loathed the perverted teen and his two friends who made the lives of the young women of their school. A living hell, while it was fun to torture Issei and the other two of his group, he still had other things he had to worry about, such as his fangirls, he didn't know how he had earned a flurry of fangirls, but he knew one thing was for certain, he did not like them, at all, they always followed him and were always asking him out on dates, while he liked girls, as any normal red-blooded man would, he didn't like the shallow girls that were always vying for his attention at school. However, there were those who never tried to get his attention and he did interact with them on occasion. He still had to find out who started that rumor of him sleeping with two of the teachers at once. He had nearly gotten expelled for that, currently, Naruto was in gym class at the pull-up bars, now, normally people would make fun of a cripple with one arm, but that stopped when Naruto had ripped off his sleeves for his gym shirt and proceeded to do 175 pull-ups with his remaining arm. Now, it was unknown if Naruto worked out his left arm by the student body, or what's left of it anyway, but one couldn't help but notice that it remained just as large as its right-sided brother. One couldn't have been more correct about that assumption than they ever could have guessed. The way Naruto kept the muscles in his left arm from growing weaker was by strapping a belt to his left arm tightly at the edge of where his arm had been severed to the point he nearly passed out due to losing circulation and then tied it to the weight he was lifting before he proceeded to do his workout. It was a very efficient method of keeping his body as close to 100% efficient as one could with a missing limb, ah, secret workouts, how amazing they were to keep the body in shape and making sure one never lost muscle mass due to ill use. Finishing his set of pull-ups, Naruto allowed himself to drop to the ground before he walked behind his spotter and allowed him to do his own set of pull-ups. It was a pretty normal day so far and the perverted trio hadn't been peeping as of late which was a shock to the female student body as they were beaten up at least three times a day by them and twice by Naruto or pranked, so something had to have been happening, the sound of the bell ringing caused a large portion of the students to sigh, as they went to change before heading to their next class sounded and Naruto followed the crowd to the changing room, it was here he heard people speaking. Now, normally, Naruto just ignored the whispers of rumor, but this actually caught his attention, two new transfer students had enrolled in the school and apparently, Issei Hyodo was dating one of them, how in the hell did that pervert manage to get a date just after meeting her? Oh well, to each their own, walking out of the locker room, Naruto walked up the stairwell to his next class and sat in his chair, when the bell rang, the teacher, an eccentric and fun elderly old woman around 56 years old named, Miss Williams, who moved from America to teach them, cleared her throat, all right class, before we begin this next lesson we have a new student to introduce, she said politely. She looked to the door and waved the new student into her class, you can come in dear, we want bite, she told the student who then opened the door and entered before walking up to the front of the class, Miss Williams gently placed a hand on the young woman's shoulder and continued, class this here is, uh, I am sorry but I never did receive your name dear, she said looking to the young woman. The young woman gave a gentle smile, it's Karina, she introduced herself. 
Like all other students of the school, she wore the Kuo school uniform which consisted of a white long-sleeved button-down shirt, short sleeves for spring, summer, with a black ribbon on her shirt collar worn under a black shoulder cape and a matching button-down corset, a magenta skirt with white accents, and brown dress shoes over white crew-length socks, she had her navy blue hair done up in a long fishtail braid that rested over her right shoulder and reached just below her breast. All in all, she could potentially match some of the more popular girls of the school in looks alone. Which was okay in Naruto's book, as he certainly did enjoy looking at some of the girls due to their beauty but he wouldn't perv out like the perverted trio that he liked pranking so much. Miss Williams nodded her head, well class, this is our new student. Karina, who will be learning with us, say hello, she told her class who greeted the young beauty. Karina just find yourself a seat and we will begin class shortly. Okay dear, she told her student who nodded and walked down the aisle next to Naruto and sat at the desk next to his own, with that, the class started up as usual and the day went on, when the bell for lunch rang, Naruto walked outside and sat underneath one of the secluded trees with his lunchbox in his lap held by his legs and opened it with his hand, reaching in he grabbed one of the fruit he kept for himself and bit into the juicy fruit with a content smile. He was drawn out of his food-induced bliss when someone walked up to him and waved to him, with a wave back, he swallowed his food and greeted his new classmate, oh, a uh, hi he spoke. Karina smiled softly, hello, I am not sure you remember me but I just transferred here, my name is Karina, she introduced herself to the blonde. Naruto nodded his head, I remember, you were in my history, math and science class with me, he said. Karina nodded her head, yes, uh, I was wondering, since you aren't eating with anyone, if you would like some company, she asked him. Naruto shrugged a shoulder, sure, I don't mind, it actually feels nice to eat with someone for a change. The blonde said as he moved over a bit to allow the blue-haired beauty to get some shade. Karina sat next to him and opened her own lunch and begun to eat, as she did, she also took notice of his arm, the one that was missing, I couldn't help but notice you have an amputated arm, why is that? She asked him. Naruto swallowed his meal before he looked at her with a lost look on his face, to be honest, I don't remember, he said honestly. Karina looked confused, how could you not remember losing an arm? I am pretty sure even someone like you could remember that, she said as politely as she could. Naruto shrugged, that's the thing I can't remember, you see. A few months ago I was in an accident, apparently. The place I was around exploded and as I was walking past. Something hit my head and I was unconscious and something landed on me, he said using the excuse the doctors gave him when he woke up, apparently, whatever it was that landed on me, was heavy enough and packed enough weight to cut the arm off and sear the wound shut at the same time. I was told I had broken several bones as well, but I wasn't given a cast because I somehow healed so fast I never needed one, to begin with, he told her. Karina nodded her head, amnesia, that was what he had, he had been hit hard enough that he actually didn't remember what had happened, she swallowed the part of her sandwich she had bitten off, what did your parents have to say? She asked him. Naruto once again shook his head, I don't have any parents, at least, the ones I remember at any rate, he told her. What? That can't be right, Karina gave him a confused look, wait, they weren't there for you, she asked with a small amount of anger, only for Naruto shook his head. Naruto continued his story, the first thing I remember was the hospital, just some regular old hospital room in a Kyoto emergency room, he told her. What, no way, she said, Naruto nodded, yeah, my skull was fractured by at least 60% and I was supposed to be diagnosed as brain dead. Apparently, it was, unnatural, to them, he said making a quotation at the word unnatural. I guess something happened and my skull healed up faster than it should have when I woke up, he said in remembrance, Karina listened closely, it was something that had been reported to Azazel when a large energy surge occurred around six months ago which was when Naruto had been admitted to the hospital, Naruto snorted with a bit of dry humor, I guess that it was something in my blood because when one of the nurses went to put a needle in my arm, it broke, he said. Wait. A needle broke against his skin, that couldn't be right. Even her skin broke when she was given a shot from the doctor during her checkups. Seeing her look nodded his head, it wasn't even an hour after that my skull and any of the other broken bones managed to heal, the doctors were, astounded, he said making another quotation movement with his hand, and after that, they wanted to know my story, just like you, I guess and I honestly didn't have one, I couldn't tell them. I was only able to identify myself thanks to them finding my ID cards on me when they got me there, he told her. Karina gave him a small look that showed she understood some of the pain he was going through, so, you honestly can't remember anything? 
she asked him. Naruto shook his head, nah, the only thing I had in my pocket was a pack of gum, a ramen coupon to a restaurant, my ID cards and a picture of me and a couple of kids and an adult, I assume I was close to, other than that, nothing, he told her, when I went to sign out I nearly had a heart attack thanks to paparazzi showing up, but I managed to give them the slip with pure luck, he said with a chuckle. Karina was confused, how come I didn't hear about any of this on the news, and my dad never told me about it since he reads the newspaper, that's so strange, she said, it was a partial lie about having a father, while the guy did love reading the paper and she saw him as a father figure in some cases, he wasn't her actual father. Naruto shrugged, I honestly wouldn't be able to tell you, but if I had to guess they wanted to keep my accident a secret cause shortly after I was never bothered by a man with a camera again, he said. Well, that's nice, Karina said as Naruto shrugged again. Naruto nodded solemnly, yeah, though it does make me wonder, what kind of bastard must I have been, that nobody was there to claim me, I mean, I am not the most charming guy in the world or so I've been told, but nobody. He said quite visibly upset. Karina patted his arm. Hey, I am sure there is someone out there who cares for you, you just haven't met them yet, she told Naruto softly. At the end of the day, all the students went home to do their own thing, Naruto paid his bills and the two disguised fallen angels went back to their leader with what information they had gathered. Oh, you didn't know. Yeah. Both new transfer students to Kuo Academy were a part of the supernatural world, Karina, known truly as Kalawarner, sat on the couch in front of the Grigori leader Azazel next to her friend Yuma, whose actual name was Rainer, who sighed as he leaned back in his seat. So, what do you girls got for me? He asked them, Rainer huffed, that little brat is so much like you, I would figure he's your son, little pervert actually wanted to grope my breasts, she huffed. I meant about his power, his strength as he is now, not his personality. Azazel deadpan towards the huffing woman. He's no stronger than any ordinary human being on this planet, I wouldn't be surprised if he died not ever knowing he had a sacred gear, she said. Azazel nodded his head in understanding, some humans who were born with a sacred gear went their entire lives without ever knowing they had one but somehow drew on a small drop of their power, he looked to Kalawarner, and what about your target, what have you got on him, he asked her. Kalawarner shrugged, other than being a complete amnesiac. He has potential, he doesn't even remember anything past six months ago. In fact, he recounted everything that happened to me. No parents, siblings, uncles, aunts, grandparents, godparents or caretakers of any sort. Claims he must have been one hell of a bastard to everyone he knew for them not to come to check up on him in the hospital. In all honesty, I am surprised he managed to recover as quickly as he did, says he healed in under an hour and even claims a needle had broken against his arm which should be physically impossible as even gods can get their shots from a hospital even though they don't actually need them, she said to her boss, he has a good head on his shoulders, is respectful and doesn't make a big deal about his missing arm either, she said. Wait, missing arm? Rainer questioned, you're talking about that kid so many of the girls in the school are attracted to. The one who can do almost anything with just one hand and some students claimed had a threesome with two of the teachers, she exclaimed with slightly red cheeks. Azazel raised a brow. Now that was interesting, the one arm bit, not sleeping with two of the teachers part. Though that would be impressive in its own right, Azazel raised a hand before Kalawarner could speak, I think I know who you're talking about, he said drawing their attention, keep an eye on them and don't do anything stupid all right, he'll have to speak with Sirzex about this and see what he knows, after all, that school is under his sister's jurisdiction, he said standing up, you two get some rest and he'll see you for your next report, good night, he said as he walked away. Good night Azazel, both women said, for the next week. Naruto and Kalawarner would hang out at the tree they ate lunch at. And for once Kalawarner could truly say she was being drawn to the blonde. While he didn't have any stories about his past he sure could weave a tale about how he could probably outrun anybody in the school by a wide margin, there was even a joke that someone brought a speedometer just to see how fast he could get but they couldn't keep up with his speed in the long run, they had even agreed to go see a movie together in the theater for one of the newer released films Godzilla. King of the Monsters to see how it was, a, n, the movie is awesome as fuck. However, all good things must come to an end as they say. It was late at night, as Naruto walked through the park that would eventually take him to his home. His backpack strapped to his back, filled with his books. And a smile on his face, today had been a rather good day for Naruto, he and Karina had spoken of some of the things they wanted to do when they got out of school and had even agreed to go to the movies next weekend, now, normally, from what he seemed to remember about himself, Naruto wouldn't go out on a date with someone he had just met but he had a good feeling about Karina, now, 
That wasn't to say things, of course, hadn't happened, because there were things that had happened. He had been given a flyer by a cute looking girl and it simply read if you want your desires to come true. Simply make a wish which Naruto thought was funny, however, things were soon about to get awry for our blonde hero, as he was walking, Naruto couldn't help but feel he was being stalked by someone, but he simply shook the feeling off as something natural, however, when a voice suddenly spoke the blonde couldn't help but jump in shock, well, 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 what do we have here, some shitty little brat trying to go home to mommy, a very crude voice spoke. Naruto turned around and saw a man wearing what was supposed to be clerical clothing and he had a disturbing smile on his face that made Naruto extremely nervous, not about his life, but for his own sanity, he gave a wave, hello priest San, it's a good evening, isn't it? He asked him, as he didn't know the man and said man wore church clothes he was now known as priest San. Fried shook his head with a disgusted look on his face, fuck the church, I don't want nothing to do with their shitty fucking ideals, he said, now. What are you doing here, ya shitty brat? He demanded as he placed his hands in his pocket. Naruto raised his hand, I apologize, but as I don't know your name I had as. Bang. He couldn't finish his apology, as a shot rang out through the clearing as Freed held up a gun, he looked down at his stomach and saw a river of red running down his stomach while staining his uniform, why you shot me, why did you shoot me? He asked in a confused tone. Freed grinned an insane smile, because I wanted to, to be honest. I am surprised you actually survived for this long with that blessed bullet in your gut. Just means I can bang you up more, Freed cackled wickedly, with that he lifted his gun up again and shot the weapon four more times into the blonde causing him to stumble back before he fell to the ground on his knee, pleasant death ya shitty kid, he said before he walked away. Naruto couldn't help it and stood up and took a step forward. Ignoring his wounds as they slowly so slow it didn't look like he was healing at all healed themselves. Why you are a v vile man. He declared causing the ex-priest to stop and turn around with a shocked look on his face before it turned into a savage grin. I don't know who you think you are, but I do know that it is illegal to just randomly shoot innocent people, Naruto said as he balled his fist, not noticing as it was surrounded by a soft white glow from his new power, so, do me a favor and get the hell out of here. He said as he shoved his fist into the mon's gut causing him to fly away where he crashed into a tree. While he didn't draw out the power from his devil fruit, it was easily said he had just activated it for the first time, Freed climbed back to his feet with a laugh, oh this is awesome. A person who can take a holy bullet and survive, shitty people in this world can't handle more than one but you've tanked five. You're pretty cool for a fucked up kid, he crowed as he raised the gun and pointed it at Naruto's heart before he pulled the trigger once again, and this time the blonde did fall, combined with his slowed healing factor, the fact they were holy bullets and he had a demon sealed inside him, and the five shots beforehand, it was just a little too much for the blonde, and Naruto collapsed to the ground as Freed cackled before he walked away without turning back. Naruto looked up to the sky with slowly dimming eyes. Why? Why am I dying here and not in some hospital bed as an old man? I didn't even get to go out with Karina as I promised her. I, I want to live, if not for me, then for those that I am close to. He thought to himself as his eyes slowly closed. As this was running through his head he didn't notice that the pamphlet in his pocket glowed a deep crimson, a few seconds later, Rias Gremory appeared in a flash of red where she looked around before she noticed Naruto lying in a pool of his own blood, with a gasp, she ran over to him and picked his head up causing his eyes to open weakly where he saw Rias red hair, hey, s such, beautiful, red hair, he whispered out as he coughed up a glob of blood. Rias couldn't help but blush at his words as she reached into her pocket, don't worry Naruto-san, I won't let you die. She said as she held up a rook piece, I, Rias Gremory, command thee, Naruto Uzumaki, on my name, Rias Gremory. She intoned as she single chess piece up before it hovered up from her hand to where it floated just above his heart, become my servant and walk these lands as a devil. She chanted as the rook piece begun to sink into his chest which in turn caused Naruto to glow as well, so that thee may live a new life with great joy as a member of my peerage. She finished as the glow faded away from around the blonde who settled into a deep sleep, his wounds now fully healed from the transformation as the holy bullets vanished. She sighed as she looked at her newest peerage member, you know, even asleep you have a cute expression, she said as she stroked his whisker marks, it's such a shame you lost your arm, I would have gladly healed you if I had been there when you were hurt, she said to him. The next day, Naruto groaned as he felt the rays from the sunland on his eyes causing him to roll to his side to try and get back to sleep. However, as if God himself said fuck you, the blonde's alarm clock went off causing him to groan as he slammed his hand down on top of the machine crushing it like it was paper, 
asterisk sigh great now he needed to replace that one as well. It seems as if he went through a dozen clocks a week now, and it wasn't his fault that he broke them when he tried to shut them off, okay. So maybe it was his fault he couldn't help but smash them when they woke him from his amazing rest as they annoyed the crap out of him, like seriously. Anyways, Naruto began his stretch before he got up, did his morning routines, and began making his way to school. While on his way, he noticed he felt more sluggish in the sun. Like he was getting weaker in the sun, which was weird, cause that had never happened to him before, and he liked the sun, though after about five minutes of walking, Naruto's body adjusted to the sun, so he didn't feel sluggish anymore. Naruto finally made it to the school, and as he was walking inside the gate, he heard someone calling out to him. Naruto turned to see that it was Karina who was jogging up to him with a smile on her face and waving at him. Naruto waited with a smile and said, Hey Karina, how are you doing today? While waving his single arm back at her. Karina caught up to him and said, I am fine, how about you, Naruto-kun? Naruto shrugged a shoulder as the two continued walking to class and said, Hey, can't complain, though I do feel different, and I had the strangest dream yesterday that I died. Karina was curious, and a little worried, and asked, What do you mean? Well, began Naruto, yesterday, I was going home when I came across a guy dressed as a priest, though, his sailor of a mouth clearly showed he didn't care about the church or was a man of God. Naruto suddenly winced in pain as he felt a headache for some reason. Karina looked worried but he waved her off, before continuing, Anyways, I tried talking to him, when all of a sudden, he pulls a gun on me and proceeded to shoot me in the stomach. Karina got worried and asked, Are you okay? You're not hurt, are you? Naruto looked at her strangely and said, I am fine like I said it was just a freak dream, are you okay? Karina blushed in embarrassment before saying, Sorry, just kinda freaked out cause I was worried, anyways, continue what you were saying. Naruto looked at her again with a raised eyebrow before continuing, anyways, after he shot me, he just began walking away, though I didn't fall that easily as I managed to stand up, before I felt this rush of energy and punch him in the face so hard, he slammed into a tree that was a couple of meters away from us. Karina was entranced in the story, and was also curious about this rush of energy Naruto spoke of as she asked, then what happened? Naruto shivered as he said, the guy proceeded to stand up. Compliment me on not dying after the first five shots before he proceeded to shoot me in my heart, obviously, at this point, I couldn't handle it any longer, so I fell to the ground, I was slowly bleeding out, about to die, when all of a sudden, I see this beautiful girl with stunning, red hair, when Naruto described the girl, he didn't notice how Karina seemed to gain a jealous expression for a second before it went away as he finished, after that, I woke up in bed this morning. Karina cleared her throat as she said, that is a crazy dream Naruto-kun. Maybe it means you need to relax some more and enjoy life before you miss the chance. Naruto hummed as he said, maybe, but the dream felt so real and I feel different, I just can't put my finger on it. Maybe you're just overthinking things, Naruto-kun, Karina suggested before saying, I think you just need to relax, after all, I don't want you all stressed out on our date this weekend, Karina finished with a sly smile and a light blush, getting Naruto to blush as well. As the two were walking, Naruto suddenly felt like someone was watching him so he turned in the direction where he saw the old school building. In the window, he saw a girl staring at him, she was wearing the school uniform with a shirt looking to be tight around her d-cup breasts, she had flawless skin with blue-green eyes that were watching him with curiosity and something else that he couldn't recognize, however, despite all of her beautiful features, the one thing that caught attention the most was her long, beautiful, crimson hair that he just couldn't take his eyes off it. The two then met gazes with him staring into her blue-green eyes and her staring into his cerulean blue eyes and time just seemed to stop. They didn't know what happened, but when their eyes met it felt like nothing else mattered but the two of them, they didn't know how long they had been staring at each other, but to the two of them, it felt like hours, the two continued to stare before Naruto was snapped out of it by Karina shaking his shoulder, garnering his attention and getting Rias to snap out of it as well. Are you alright? You kinda zoned out on me for a second there she asked while doing her best to keep the jealousy out of her voice. Naruto shook his head in an attempt to clear after what just happened and said, why yeah, yeah, I am fine, I am probably still tired or something. With that, Naruto walked to class with Karina following close behind him, neither noticing how Rias seemed to be staring at Naruto again but with a blush on her cheeks, she was also clutching her hands to her chest where her heart resided in an attempt to calm her now rapidly beating heart. Foo foo foo. Rias' eyes suddenly widened as she jumped when she heard someone laughing behind her and turned rapidly with her face burning even brighter with a blush. Turning around, she came face to face with another girl her age, 
This girl had long black hair held in a ponytail by an orange ribbon and violet colored eyes. She wore the same uniform as Rias that also strained against her bust, which was bigger than Rias at DD Cup, something that oftentimes caused Rias' eyebrow to twitch in jealousy when it was brought up or emphasized. This was Akano Himejima, Rias' friend and queen, in her peerage. Has my king found something that interests her? Akano asked in a teasing manner, getting Rias to blush even more before she shook her head, clearing up most of her blush except for a bit on her cheeks, and glared at Akano. Don't do that, Akano. Rias exclaimed, showing that she hadn't been expecting Akano to suddenly sneak up on her like that. Rias then turned back to look out the window and said, And whether I've found someone interesting is none of your concern. Hum. Akano hummed while moving closer to Rias, getting her to look at Akano from the corner of her eye with a raised eyebrow as Akano said, I never said someone now did I, Rias Bucko? Rias, realizing her slip up, blushed before clearing her throat and said, All right, fine. Someone has indeed caught my eye. What do you know about Naruto Uzumaki? Akano hummed in thought before saying, There's not much to say about him really, other than the regular rumors around school about him sleeping with Lucy Sensei and Urza Sensei, he is just a regular boy who lost his arm. Why do you wish to know? A. N. Number 2. Rias sighed as she explained to Akano about what happened when she was summoned and finding Naruto bleeding out, she then finished her explanation of the night with how she used Rook, peace on him and healed him, minus the compliments she was given. No need to give Akano more ammo to tease me, thought Rias, as she suffers enough with Akino's teasing, and didn't need to give the girl something else to tease her about. Akano looked to be in deep thought over what Rias revealed before she looked at Rias and said, From what you've said, I think you did the right thing, as it shows that you don't help someone simply because of an ability they have. This shows that you are growing into a proper leader and king, as you no longer look for those simply for their ability or sacred gear. Rias smiled and said, Thank you, Akano, and you know what? You're right, before I might have tried to manipulate Hyodo san, if only for the fact that he has a strong sacred gear according to Kaneko saying she smells dragons from him, but now, I think I'll try and ask him at a later point in time if only to let him have a normal life for a bit longer, after all, I need all the help I can get in dealing with him. Akano could hear the malice and anger in Rias' voice when she said, him and she knew who Rias was talking about, Akano nodded her head before she said, I understand Rias and don't worry, the others and myself will do everything we can to help, Rias nodded her head before she and Akano left the room in preparation for their class. Home EC class, it was currently the end of the day and Naruto could say that he has had a good day, despite the weird dream he had, he hung out with Karina, with the two of them discussing what they would do on their next date, he defended the kendo girls from the perverted trio and got a kiss from Murayama and Katase, much to Karina's jealousy, and finally, he got his math test back showing 100%, which greatly surprised him, all before lunch and between passing periods. Currently, it was the last class of the day, and Naruto really enjoyed home EC with Urza Sensei, he didn't understand it, but he enjoyed cooking with everyone in the class, he liked the feeling of everyone being in the class kitchen cooking together rather than when he was at home alone, at times, it had felt like a dream but he would quickly remember that it was all real. Naruto. Naruto jumped at the sound of the feminine voice in his head and this caused him to fall off the chair he had been sitting in while waiting for Urza Sensei. A lot of the boys in class began laughing at him as they didn't like him due to him being a pretty boy and gaining the attention of all the girls in the school. The girls, on the other hand, were worried and wanted to see if he was okay. But he simply stood up and said, I am fine, sorry about that. He sat back in his seat next to Murayama and Katase, where the two of them sent worried looks at him before Katase asked, Are you sure you're alright, Naruto-kun? Naruto simply smiled at Katase and said, Thank you for worrying but I am fine just lost my balance for a second. Murayama and Katase nodded their heads as Murayama said, All right, Naruto-kun, so what do you think Urza-sensei will have us make today? Naruto rubbed his chin as he said, I am not sure, but I might have an idea if today is what I think it is. His answer confused the two as Katase asked, What do you mean, Naruto-kun? Naruto turned to the two and said, Well, I think I remember Urza-sensei saying her birthday was this week but I couldn't remember what day it was. So, if today is her birthday, then she'll most likely have everyone baking desserts. Murayama and Katase were surprised by this information, as they didn't know Urza Sensei's birthday was this week. Wow, we didn't know that it was Urza Sensei's birthday this week. Yeah, well, she doesn't like to talk about it much when she's here because a lot of the guys here would either try to get her alone for themselves, get her inappropriate gifts, or they'd all gang up on her. Now, while the last is highly unlikely, it is still a possibility, though personally, 
I think the most likely reason is the second since the guys here are all wimps, Naruto said, getting Murayama and Kates to giggle since they knew he was right in that most of the guys were wimps. After that, the three friends just sat comfortably together in their group, waiting for Urza sensei to arrive and start class, while they waited, Naruto just continued to use his fingers to rub his palm, more specifically, the white sun mark in the center of his hand, that was something else that Naruto had discovered about himself, Naruto had found the mark on his hand after he had woken in the hospital and when he had tried to search it up, he came up with nothing, a, n, number 3. He had even risked getting chewed out by Sona to ask if she had ever seen the mark, luckily, Son didn't berate him for the mark due to him wanting to find out about his past, but unfortunately, she hadn't seen it before, while this was saddening for him, Sona had assured him that she would look into the mark and see if she could find anything, this had earned her a hug from Naruto, causing her to heavily blush before she had whacked him on the head. Naruto was broken from his thoughts when he heard the door open along with a shout of, quiet down, in a commanding voice. Turning to the owner of said voice, Naruto saw it was his home EC teacher who, he was slightly embarrassed to admit, he had a slight crush on, her name was Urza Scarlet, she had long red hair that was currently in a ponytail and brown eyes, she was wearing a white, long-sleeved blouse that hugged her figure, showing off her e-cup breasts and thin waist, she was also wearing some black slacks that fit snug against her toned heart-shaped rear and a pair of black heels. Everyone had managed to finally quiet down and were paying attention as Urza spoke, all right, now today, you all are going to be baking desserts, more specifically, strawberry cheesecakes, Send one person to come and get the recipes from my desk for each group before going back to your tables. As for the rest of you, once your partner comes back, go get the measuring cups, mixing bowls, and all the other equipment needed for today. The equipment needed is listed at the top of the recipe. After that, everyone got their recipes and equipment before they all started to make their cakes. Luckily, Naruto was used to cooking with one hand so he didn't slow down Kates or Murayama, though the three still went at a good pace so as to not make mistakes. As the three were waiting for their cake to finish, Kates and Murayama struck up a conversation with Naruto. So Naruto-kun, we had a question we wanted to ask you, Kates started with Murayama looking at Naruto as well, while they waited for the cake to finish in the oven. Naruto looked at the two with a smile and replied, What's up Kates-chan? Murayama-chan. Both girls lightly blushed as they were embarrassed to about the question they were going to ask, but before they could the timer went off. Both girls said they'd tell him later before they pulled the cake out of the oven. As the three begin putting the finishing touches, they jump when they suddenly hear the sound of someone shouting. What the hell is this? Turning towards the shout, they see Urza sensei looking towards the perverted trio with an intense and fierce glare. The three deadpanned at the sight before looking at their table to see what might have once been a strawberry cheesecake was now just a lump of charcoal with the frosting they used to create a penis design. Kates and Murayama were disgusted by this while Naruto felt disappointment as well as disgust, disappointment in the school for not expelling the three, despite all the perverted acts they perform, and disgust for how far most of the male populace has fallen. I I it's our CC cake, E Urza sensei, stuttered Matsuda due to being very much afraid of Urza sensei's well-known fury when she gets mad. This isnt a cake, it's a lump of charcoal and what the hell is with this vulgar image? Urza shouted, still beyond pissed that they would try and sell that bullshit lie to her. WWETH thought you WW would L like it, stuttered Motohama, getting disgusted looks from all the girls, including the boys, as well as pissing Urza off even more. Why on earth would I like something like this? Urza shouted, getting the three to cower in fear before she then exclaimed, F, that is the grade you three are getting as well as detention. The three voiced their opinions that it was unfair since she didn't even try their cake but then backed off when she glared at them before giving the three detention, as she continued checking everyone's cakes, she gave them all honest grades which were all B plus S to C plus S, since while they were good, they all either missed something, like the glaze for the cake, or they were partially burnt, while everyone was slightly disappointed since they figured they could have done better, they were okay with their grade when compared to the perverted trio. As Urza went over to Naruto's group, she spotted their cake and got a glint in her eye as she walked over. She walked over and looked over our cake with an interested gaze before she took the slice that we had prepared and took a bite. Um, Urza moaned in delight as she then said, This delicious, you three get an A for today and if you don't mind, I'd like to take this with me. Naruto, Kates, and Murayama all chuckled or giggled as Naruto said, We don't mind at all, Urza sensei. Urza smiled as she took the cake and placed it in the fridge while she dismissed the class as school was now over. She watched over her shoulder as Naruto left while talking and smiling with Kates and Murayama and smiled as she thought, 
Maybe he is what this world needs to bring back some of its light. Time skip. One week later, it had been a week after Naruto had that strange dream and so far. Everything seemed fine. The school was the same with him pranking the male students when they attempted to peep on the girls' kendo club, this even included the perverted trio again after Issei had joined up with them again whenever he wasn't with Yuma, at one point, he had even borrowed one of the kendo club's bakken to beat the perverted trio before attempting to return it but was instead told to keep it before being asked if he would like to join the kendo club. Naruto had originally refused, saying that it was the girls' kendo club so he wouldn't be allowed until they told him that the club accepted both genders. The only reason they hadn't accepted or extended invitations to any of the male students before was that most of the boys in the school were pervs, when he asked why him, they said it was because they knew he wouldn't ever do something like peep on them and that it would make it easier to protect them from the pervs, as well as maybe teach him how to fight with a sword using one arm. Naruto had thought about it before he agreed, getting the girls to all cheer. They were going to give him one of the outfits meant for the club until they remembered that they never ordered bigger sizes since they hadn't expected to invite a male. They apologized but Naruto had simply laughed before saying that he would pack some shorts and a t-shirt whenever he came to the club, with that, his school life had proceeded the same with the only difference being that none of the males or the perverted trio could peep on the girls as Naruto had placed sheet metal over the wall, making it impossible for any of the males to peep while also ensuring that the girls would be able to change clothes in peace. He had also managed to take Karina out on the date they had planned and the two of them had greatly enjoyed themselves. They had gone to a cafe for breakfast before walking around the shopping district, they had later gone to lunch before heading to a street fair and ending the date with dinner and karaoke where Naruto surprised her with how well he could sing, as the date came to an end, Naruto had surprised Karina with a necklace that had an angel wing charm, Karina had loved it so much that she had kissed him on the cheek, causing him to blush while she giggled at his expression. All in all, Naruto had had a good week, currently. It was late at night and Naruto was walking back to his apartment after training with Kates and Murayama with his Bakken in hand. Lately, when training, he would sometimes begin to feel uncomfortable with the Bakken, like it wasn't meant for him or he needed a different weapon, had brought this up with Kates and Murayama and both had suggested the three of them go to a different dojo to see what he picked, Naruto had smiled at that as they were willing to go out of their way to make him happy. Meow, Naruto stopped when he heard that, as he began looking around until he felt something brush against his leg, Looking down, he saw that it was a black cat with amber eyes looking at him with curiosity. Naruto smiled as he crouched down, placed his sports bag down, and held out his hand to the cat, getting it to look at him for a second before it began rubbing against his hand while purring happily. Well, hello there, where did you come from? Naruto asked while looking at the cat before looking around as he asked, Do you live in one of these houses? Taking another look at the cat, Naruto saw there was no collar or tags, hum, no tags, guess you must be a stray. Naruto then extended his arm, getting the cat to notice before it climbed up to his shoulder where it sat and began to rub and lick his cheek, he he he, hey, cut it out, that tickles, the cat stopped and settled down on his shoulder, getting Naruto to smile before he picked up his bag and continued home. Naruto looked at the cat, getting it to look back at him as he said, hum if you're going to be living with me now, we're going to have to come up with a name for you, Naruto looked down slightly and said, and it'll have to be a girl's name since you are a female, suddenly. Naruto heard the sound of wind chimes playing and then he said, I got it. Your name is going to be Kuroka. Obviously, the cat agreed when it began purring and rubbing against his cheek again getting Naruto to laugh until he heard a voice. Well, well, what do we have here? Naruto's eyes went wide as he turned around to see a man with a grey trench coat and a pulled down fedora standing there with brown hair. Naruto could feel something was wrong and could guess Kuroka felt the same by how she seemed to be tensing on his shoulder with her tail also standing straight. Who are you? Naruto asked as he really didn't trust this guy and much rather trusted his gut which told him this guy was bad news. The man ignored Naruto as he smirked and said, a little devil without his master, how curious, tell me, where is your master? Naruto just looked confused as he asked, what are you talking about, man? And what master? Well, if you don't have a master, then that makes you a stray devil, now doesn't it? Suddenly, the man summoned a blue spear of light, shocking Naruto as he quickly pulled out the wooden katana that he had on him from training, the man then said, and unfortunately, strays must be eliminated, the guy proceeded to throw the spear at him but Naruto instinctively dodged it, causing the spear to explode when it hit a tree. Naruto was surprised that he was able to dodge it as he had never had training before so this was a big surprise to him, he got the wooden sword in position as he shouted, what the hell was that? You just threw a spear of light at me. The man frowned when Naruto had dodged the attack and said, 
Well, this is unexpected. You seem to be able to dodge my attacks, though it won't matter as sooner or later. You will slip up and I will kill you. He made another spear of light and proceeded to go on the attack as he charged Naruto. Naruto blocked the guy's slash with his wooden sword, surprising the man when the wooden sword held up. Unfortunately, Naruto took advantage of the guy's surprise as he hit him over the head with the Bakken with surprising strength, getting the guy to slam into the ground while Naruto backed up in case the guy decided to attack, which was a good idea because not a second later the guy had swung the Spear of Light where Naruto was standing a second ago. Naruto was panting slightly as he did his best to minimize his movements to make sure that Kuroka didn't fall off his shoulder. Which was working so far if her claws still digging into his shoulder were anything to go by. Naruto watched as the guy stood back up, blood dripping down his face from when Naruto smashed him in the back of the head and from his currently broken nose from hitting the ground, Naruto was watching the guy as he lifted his face to show complete rage and anger which was directed at Naruto, the guy then charged at Naruto a lot faster than before slammed his spear of light into Naruto's bakken and kept applying more and more strength, pushing Naruto to his knees. I was originally just going to give a quick death, but now because of your resistance, I am going to make you suffer, the guy said while adding more pressure. First, I am going to break every bone in your body, then you'll watch as I rape all the girls you know while they try and reach out for you, calling for you to help while you're unable to, it'll make you watch as I torture every one of them, slowly and painfully until they finally beg for death, finally, once they are all dead, then and only then will I grant you the mercy that is known as death. Naruto's eyes went wide and snapped into focus at this as Kutais. Murayama, and Karina flashed in his mind, gritting his teeth, Naruto suddenly felt a massive surge of strength and energy well up inside of himself as he began to push back against the man, shocking the fallen angel. Naruto slowly stood up before, with a loud shout, shoved him away with tremendous force, launching the fallen angel into a nearby wall. Naruto was glaring at the fallen angel and was so focused on him, that he completely ignored the additional presence he felt in the area. Rias Pav. Rias had no idea what to expect from her latest peerage member, but she had decided to take up Sona's advice and look for someone based on their character. Naruto's personality was such a breath of fresh air that she couldn't have been happier with choosing him for her peerage. On top of that, he was already pretty strong when she reincarnated him, so his enhanced strength would be even greater. She knew that she couldn't watch him all day since that would arouse suspicion if she was found watching a student a year younger than her, so it was a good thing she had Kaneko watch him since she was his junior. Plus, it wouldn't be strange to find her watching him as it could be made to believe that she looking up to him as a role model, however, when she received an alert from Kaneko about Naruto being attacked by a fallen angel, she had decided now was the time to intervene. When she had arrived, Rias had somewhat expected Naruto to be near death's door or at least barely holding his own against the fallen angel. What she had not expected to see was a body being flung into a wall with enough force to crater the wall, upon closer inspection, she saw that it was the fallen angel who had been flung into the wall, Rias would have thought about it more but she was broken from her thoughts when she felt a burst of energy, looking towards the source, Rias was shocked to see that it was, in fact, coming from Naruto, more specifically, his glowing white Bakken. Back with Naruto, Naruto didn't know where this energy was coming from, but he knew that with it, he could achieve victory, Naruto charged at the man before he suddenly had an image and a name appear in his head, Naruto focused the energy he felt from his center, down his arm, and to the Bakken in his hand where a white bubble began to surround the weapon. Unfortunately, Naruto's anger was slightly clouding his focus to the point that his energy was beginning to overcharge his attack. As seen by it turning from white to slightly green, Naruto kept charging the man in the wall, who was just barely getting to his feet. Naruto ignored the fact that his Bakken was beginning to crack, he ignored the fact that Kuroka had jumped off his shoulder, he ignored everything around him, all that mattered to Naruto at this moment, was defeating the man that was in front of him. Naruto continued to charge until he was within reach and swung his charged Bakken, just as the man looked up at him with wide, fear-filled eyes, as Naruto swung, the name that had appeared in his mind, popped up once again and he shouted it out with his voice now booming throughout the area. Halberd Rikshasa. The Bakken slammed right into the Mon's head as Naruto had performed a downward swing onto the Mon's head, slamming him down once upon, but this time, an explosion rang out as the air cracked before the entire city of Kuo began experiencing a massive earthquake. The shockwaves alone were throwing off Rios' balance from the sudden and huge burst of power that was shifting the ground in the air. Once the shockwaves calmed down, Rios began to slowly float down as the smoke cleared. Once she had landed, the smoke was mostly gone and she could finally see just what exactly Naruto's attack caused. There were cracks everywhere, all along the street. Walls, even the windows of the nearby buildings were shattered. 
Rias was shocked by all the damage that was done from Naruto's attack and, from the looks of it, his newly awakened powers, the redhead could only wonder, was this some type of forgotten sacred gear or something, if it was the former, then it was definitely a powerful one, strong enough to match the Longinus class sacred gears if not surpass suddenly heard a snap under her foot and looked down to see it was a piece of wood, she crouched down to pick it up and examine it until she realized it was part of a bakken. She was broken from her thought as she heard someone breathing and looked to the source to see Naruto standing there, eyes shadowed, shirt blown off, face turned towards the sky, and his right arm looked to be turning purple showing that it had been completely broken, Rias was surprised to see Naruto still clutching the Bakken despite his arm being completely shattered, but she saw that it was only the handle which was still in one piece. NYA, Rias blinked as she realized she was staring before she looked down to see a black cat with hazel gold eyes continuously rubbing itself against Naruto's leg in worry. Rias frowned in sadness as the cat was very worried about the Uzumaki before Rias realized that Naruto wasn't responding. Suddenly, Rias, herself, began to feel very worried at Naruto's lack of response and began to move towards him. Once she reached him, she gingerly touched his shoulder until she heard several soft thumps. Turning around, she saw the rest of her peerage as well as her best friend, Suna Shitori, or, as she is actually called, Sona Sitri, heiress to the Sitri clan and fellow territory owner alongside herself. Sona, what the hell happened here? Rias was cut off when Sona, very uncharacteristically, shouted and cursed loudly, everyone would have been shocked, if not for the fact that they were standing in a giant crater with Naruto at the center of it, they were all shocked to see such an incredible amount of damage, but Sona was also pissed because this would need to be reported to her sister and Rias brother, along with having to deal with erasing everyone's memories of the event and fixing all the damage before morning. Sona, calm down, Rias calmly said, trying to placate her best friend. Calm down. Calm down. Sona shouted. Do you have any idea how much work I have to do now? How many people's memories ill have to rewrite? On top of all that, I have to fix the area and report this to both my sister and your brother. So again, explain to me, why I should calm down. Rias sighed as she understood where Sona was coming from, however, this time, she wasn't gonna let Sona do it alone. Look, I know this is a lot of damage, but there is a reason for it. Rias began before she began telling Sona about reincarnating Naruto as her new, rook. She explained how Kaneko had alerted her to Naruto being attacked by a fallen angel and that when she had arrived it was to see the fallen angel get thrown into a wall before Naruto charged and slammed his powered up Bakken right onto the fallen's head. Everyone was shocked to hear that Naruto had caused all the damage and was still thinking about it until someone spoke. Is he okay? Akano asked as she noticed Naruto was still standing in the same spot. Everyone looked over and saw that Naruto hadn't moved an inch with the cat still rubbing against his leg. This was now beginning to get very worrying so they had moved a little closer before they stopped as they didn't know what to do, however, Rias had decided that he was her, rook, so she should check on him and with that, Rias walked back over to Naruto, everyone was on guard as Rias moved closer to Naruto, cautious of what the Uzumaki will do. After what felt like an hour to everyone, which in reality was not even a minute, Rias stood beside Naruto, she gingerly grabbed Naruto's shoulder before lightly shaking him as she asked, Naruto? Are you alright? However, instead of answering, Naruto instead began to fall forward as he finally let go of the broken Bakken handle, this shocked everyone as Rias caught him before he fell and gently placed Naruto on the ground with everyone rushing over, it was only now that Naruto was laying down that they could all see that he was unconscious, shocking them even further. He was unconscious this whole time? Asked a wide-eyed Sona, as she and everyone else was shocked. Well, Rias started, gaining everyone's attention as she had placed Naruto head on her lap, it makes sense, seeing as it looks like he unleashed his power for the first time, whatever it is. Everyone agreed as they looked around realizing that it made sense due to his lack of control, he wasn't able to contain this tremendous power inside of him, they didn't know what adventures lie ahead of them, but they knew for a fact that with Naruto, everything would change. It's been about a week since Naruto unleashed his power to fight against Donaseek and the devils found out about his strength, apparently, Naruto's attack was recorded at a 5, 6 on the Richter scale as all of Kuo felt the attack, many homes developed cracks and were weakened by the attack, and these were the ones far away from the attack. The homes that were at the epicenter of Naruto's attack had been completely demolished and reduced to rubble. Luckily, there were no casualties, so the devils were lucky in that regard, especially since Sona, Sona's sister, and Rias' brother would have had Rias' head if there were casualties. Anyways, Kuo Academy had been fairly close to the epicenter of the attack so it was closed for the week to repair the parts that were heavily damaged or weakened, 
The students, while still shaken up, pun intended, they were at least happy they were given a break from school for a week. Well, the girls were happy. All the guys were pissed or distraught at not being able to go to school since they couldn't look at all the beautiful girls who went there. Right now, we find ourselves in the student council room in Kuo Academy where Sona and Rias were having a meeting. They were currently discussing what to do about Rias' recent addition to her peerage and the power he wields. So, Sona began, still slightly pissed because of all the work she had to do last night and she still has more to do, what are you going to do about this Rias? What do you mean? Rias asked, completely forgetting what occurred recently due to the stress she was currently dealing with. Sona slammed her hands on the desk and shouted, you know exactly what I mean. Rias winced at Sona's tone as she did indeed know what Sona was talking about, but with the stress of upcoming events, Rias had temporarily forgotten what had happened. Rias groaned as she rubbed the bridge of her nose as she said, Sorry Sona. I guess I forgot with all the stress of what's coming up piling. Sona frowned as she sighed and replied, I understand Rias, but you can't ignore your duties as a king. Simply because of other issues or circumstances, you have to accept responsibility for your actions and your life, starting with your peerage and your new member. Rias looked at her hands for a minute before she realized that Sona was right, this whole time, she thought she was fighting against the decision her parents had made but she was only fooling herself, instead of training and looking for ways out of this arranged marriage with her disgusting bastard of a fiancé, she had chosen to wait for someone to save her. Rias clenched her hands as she said, you're right, Sona. Sona blinked at Rias' response but she stayed quiet as Rias continued. All this time, I've been complaining about this stupid arrangement my parents made, but I haven't done anything about it, I haven't tried to get stronger. I haven't tried to push my peerage members to get stronger or help them resolve their issues, and I haven't even tried to look for any other possible solutions to end my engagement. Well, that all stops now, I am going to work hard to make sure that I can get out of this and so that I can now move forward with my life with my head held high. Sona smiled at her best friend and said, I am glad you're back Rias, I've missed my best friend who always took matters into her own hands. Rias returned the smile with her own soft smile, as she said, yeah, then she frowned though, I am sorry it took me so long to realize what I've been doing wrong all these years, I must have sounded like such a brat, complaining about her situation and doing nothing about it. Sona looked at Rias and said, maybe just a bit, this got Rias to make a sound of indignation which made Sona smile a bit before continuing, but, I also understand the position you're in, since I, myself, was in a similar one when we were younger, however, now that you have decided to start moving forward, it'll be more willing to help you now. Rias looked at Sona with wide eyes as she listened to Sona, well need to first start tackling your peerage members' individual problems, such as your queen's refusal to use a power that is available to her, the same with your rook, since it is quite obvious she is still resisting the use of what makes her a nekosho. Rias nodded since that was indeed the case for Akano and Kaneko since they both had other abilities and powers, but refused to use them, Akano refused out of spite for her father, and Kaneko refuses out of fear and spite for her sister. Rias knew this when she first met them, but instead of trying to help them pass their issues, she simply asked once and then gave up when they refused. Rias was knocked from her thoughts when she heard Sona continue, as for your knight. I suggest therapy sessions in order to hopefully completely get rid of his issues with the holy swords, or at the very least, to curb his want for revenge enough so that hell listen to you if there ever comes a time where the holy swords are nearby. Rias agreed with her longtime friend since she knew that Kiba put up a convincing mask of him being okay but she knew better, after all, no one goes through what Kiba did without some degree of damage in the end, add on to the fact that Kiba has gone for so long without seeking therapy of any kind, and he very well could end up being damaged to an irreparable state, she didn't want any of her peerage members to suffer any longer and she was going to make sure they got the help they needed. As for your, bishop, there isn't much we can do right now since she is still sealed until a later date but maybe we can start working on her issue of being around new people for now, Sona suggested since she knew about Rios, bishop, and her inability to both control her sacred gear and be around people. Rias nodded her head and said, makes sense, though I'll ask my brother to get in touch with Beelzebub Sama to see if he can make a seal that she can wear like a bracelet or necklace so that she can come out sooner. Sona agreed with that since it was a sound idea and would allow for them to better assist Rias, Bishop, since she would constantly be around people who would want to get to know her, especially since she couldn't allow for students to go to the sealed room alone without supervision mainly for the fact that she didn't have a way to explain why there was a room that everyone seemed to simply pass by. Sona then remembered something and said, when you have your brother contact Beelzebub Sama, be sure to also ask if he has a device or something to scan for sacred gears since your rook 
cause quite a bit of destruction, well need to know about what we're dealing with so that he can be better trained and hopefully not cause as much destruction as before. Rias nodded and said, I will be sure to do that since I want to know as well to help him as best as I can, after all, I can't say I am growing as a king, if I don't start helping my family make themselves better. Sona and Rias nodded at each other before Sona looked at the time and saw what time it was, she said, well, since it is almost time for lunch, why don't you have a Kano go and retrieve Mr. Uzumaki for us so that all of us can get this over with as soon as possible, and we can have some delicious food immediately after? Rias nodded her head and said, that's a great idea, I'll call her right now and send her over to retrieve him and then I'll call my brother to see about getting into contact with Beelzebub Sama. With that, Rias called Akano and asked her to go get Naruto after she was given his address by Sona and that she would call the rest of the peerage to meet at the student council room. After getting confirmation from Akano, she hung up the phone before preparing to perform one of the most difficult tasks she would ever have to perform just short of birthing a child. Calling her brother, Rias pulled out a red crystal from her pocket and stared at it for a second, as she really didn't want to call her brother, her unwillingness must have been quite visible on her face as Rias soon felt Sona place a hand on her shoulder, gaining her attention. If you want, I can call him instead, Sona offered, since I know how it feels whenever I have to call my sister. Rias sent Sona a grateful smile handed her the crystal before saying, Thank you Sona, I'll make it up to you by being the one to call your sister the next time that you need to. Sona smiled before taking the crystal from Rias and channeling her magic into it as it began to shine before a screen appeared from the crystal in the projected screen, was a person who looked just like Rias, from the skin tone and blue-green eyes to the long, crimson-colored hair with the only difference being that this person was male. This was her older brother, Sears X Lucifer, formerly Gremory, the Crimson Satan, King of the Underworld, and the Strongest Devil, now, while these were very impressive titles, and one expected him to be serious and professional. Rias ta ANNNN. Sona simply deadpanned while subtly looking at Rias who held her face in her heads while muttering something about, stupid Oni Sans. Looking back at Sears X, Sona simply waited as he continued talking, Rias Tan you finally called, oh how exciting, I can finally, Sears X stopped as he finally looked at Sona, hey wait, you're not Rias Tan. Sona bowed her head to the king of the underworld and said, apologies Lord Lucifer but Rias is busy and has asked me to call you in her place as her duties have taken up her time, which was not a total lie, but he need not know that. Sears X nodded his head and spoke, I see, well I can't say I completely blame her, her duties are rather important, so, what does my dear little sister need of me seeing as she has let you use her communication crystal? Sona cleared her throat and said, well, Lord Lucifer. Rias has recently acquired a special member in her peerage with an unknown ability. She saw him use it last night to defeat a fallen angel, but his power had not only defeated the fallen but had also destroyed the surrounding area, it is unfortunate but we have not seen or heard of anything like it before, if it would be possible, would you be able to send Lord Beelzebub here so he can tell us what his ability is exactly so we can prepare for something that may happen later on down the line of time? She asked the devil king. Sirzex hummed in thought, well, Ajuka has been bored rather lately, so a trip out of that place he calls a lab should do him some good, besides, it couldn't hurt him to see what the fuss is all about, he told her before nodding his head, all right, let me get into contact with him and I'll send him your way so you can find out what is happening with my sister's new member, he told her. Sona bowed her head to the king of devils, thank you, Lord Lucifer. Yep, anytime kid, take care and tell Rias Tan I said hi, and with that, the image vanished. Sona sighed to herself, well, at least that is taken care of. Meanwhile, Naruto sat in class bored out of his mind. Lucy Sensei was busy giving the lecture of the day. And it just seemed so lame he had to endure such boring nonsense. Lucy had long, blonde hair that was held in a bun by a red ribbon with two long strands and her bangs framing her beautiful face, she also had doe brown eyes and smooth, fair skin, she was currently wearing a blue blouse that hugged her f-cup bust very nicely and showed off her fit and tight waist, she also wore a white pencil skirt that hugged her tone ass and showed off her luscious thighs and long legs, before ending in a pair of royal blue high heels. Currently, Lucy Sensei was giving a lecture about when Japan was bombed by America during World War II, but seriously, why would he need to know this? So that history didn't repeat itself. He understood that people made mistakes, but was humanity really stupid enough to repeat that kind of mistake? Before he could ponder such things anymore, there was a knock on the door before it opened to reveal the lovely Akano Himejima, Lucy Sensei, I need to borrow Naruto-san for a few moments, he's being brought into the occult research club as a new member, however, 
We forgot to inform him the other day so we would like to do this while we still have time today, she said to the teacher. Sure go right ahead, the blonde bombshell said to the hybrid while smiling. Naruto shrugged his shoulders and began collecting his belongings, seeing his solitary struggle to gather his things, Akano walked over to try and help but stopped when he looked at her, it's fine, Akano-san, I got this, I am not so helpless as to let this bother me, you can wait outside if you wish, it'll be just a moment, but thank you for trying to help me, he told her softly. He didn't want people's pity, when he had gathered his stuff, Naruto walked out the door Akano had left open and followed after her when she closed the door to the classroom, Naruto cleared his throat and could only ask, so, how long was the occult research club been evaluating me to join? Akano smiled and answered his question, not that long, just for about a couple days to be honest, she told him, I think this is a good opportunity for you to branch out in your studies. Naruto nodded his head, I thank you, but I am getting the feeling that my being recruited to this club has a more specific meaning behind it than what I am being told, he said calmly as he followed beside the busty beauty. Akano smiled softly, that may be true, but you don't need to worry, we just need to speak with Rias Bucko and explain what your responsibilities are going to be, she told him. Naruto sighed and looked to Akano before he said, uh, not to rain on the parade, but last I checked, the O, R, C only tends to matters that deal with the supernatural Akano-san, so I don't see how I would be of any help. Akano giggled, era era, you may never know, if anything I feel that you'll personally, shake things up so I think it's good we were looking into inviting you, she said to the hunky blonde next to her. Whatever you say, Akano-san, the blonde responded. With that, the two walked in silence as they made their way to the old school building where the orc held their club, Naruto just looked forward while his right hand was in his pocket, however, Akano was doing more than just walking, as they made their way, Akano looked Naruto over from the corner of her eye, she found it interesting how one with one arm could live life so normally and without much issue, though she did feel sad that he didn't have any memories. After all, memories are what make a person who they are, all their experiences, all their mistakes, all their achievements. These are the very foundation of a person's core and they define a person's personality, so now here she was, wondering, how can someone who lost their memories and their foundation, still be so happy and filled with life? When someone like her, who still has her memories, a life, and friends, is so broken and has to hide behind a mask. Hey, are you okay? Snapping out of her thoughts, Akano shook her head and looked to see Naruto looking at her with a concerned expression, putting on another fake smile. Akano said, era era. What's this? Is the cute underclassman worried about his senior? Now under normal circumstances, being called cute would have caused Naruto to blush, however, these were not normal circumstances, thus causing Naruto to say, yes, cause despite us not interacting very much, whenever I see you or pass you in the hall, you always have this fake smile on your face, so now I am asking, not about how you are feeling but how you are as a person, are you okay? Akano completely stopped moving along with Naruto as she looked at him with wide eyes and asked with very clear worry, W what are you talking about? Figuring she must be on the very border of having a nervous breakdown at getting spotted so easily. Naruto decided to try and ease her worries, look, I don't know how. But it's always been very easy for me to see past a person's mask. Whether they have something to hide or it's because they are trying to hide their pain, I can always tell, and you, while you're indeed, very good at hiding behind your mask. I can still see it, you don't have to tell me now since you barely know me and all, but I just want you to know that it'll be here whenever you're ready to talk after we become better friends, Naruto finished with a soft smile before he continued walking towards the old school building that was in sight. Akano, however, kept staring at Naruto in shock for seeing through her mask so easily as no one has ever seen through her mask, hell, Rias was the only one who could see past her mask and that's because Rias knows the reason Akano hides behind a mask, suddenly. Naruto's words echoed through her mind. It'll be here whenever you're ready to talk after we become better friends. He already considers the two of his friends despite not knowing me, Akano thought with, much to her surprise, a real, genuine smile on her face, opening up doesn't seem so bad now with someone like him by my side. Akano quickly shook her head and swiftly caught up to Naruto as they were reaching the orc, but she couldn't help but notice how much lighter she felt from just the knowledge that he would be there for her. She looked at Naruto again and smiled as she was glad, that despite the lack of a formal introduction, he was willing to support her so soon. Once they got to the door, Akano knocked and said, Rias Bucko, I've brought Naruto-san here as you requested. The two then heard, excellent, come on in and give me a minute. With that, the two entered the old school building and Naruto was greeted by a room that looked to have a Victorian style. 
He looked around to see that the entire room was wood paneled, with Victorian style couches and a coffee table in the center of the room. Lining the walls were several Victorian style chairs and various accent tables that held moderate sized lamps and small vases of flowers. Naruto then noticed how one side of the room had been altered to have a bath and shower installed with a curtain. It was upon finally seeing the custom shower that Naruto realized it was currently being occupied as he saw the silhouette of a girl behind the curtains, he could tell it was a girl behind the curtain because of the curves he could see from the silhouette. Akano, the very clear female voice called out, can you come and bring me a change of clothes and a towel? Akano smiled and nodded her head, even though Rias couldn't see it, of course Bucko, it'll be right on it, she said before turning to Naruto, you can go sit on the couch, shall be right out in a moment, she told him kindly. Thanks, Naruto said as he went to one of the couches. Rias sighed as she listened to Naruto converse with her best friend, honestly, Akano needed to lighten up or else it would only get more intense for her, the fact she lost her mother at a young age and then her father simply up and vanished shortly after to leave her behind made it the biggest problem for Akano to have friends. The girl needed a hobby now that she thought about it. Rias moaned silently, now the real thing she was asking herself was in reality if her peerage could handle such a devastating ability. The thing she didn't know was that it was the very power that she, as well as all other factions, needed to live on in the future. Rias closed her eyes and felt the water wash over her body and heard it go down the drain of the shower. She ran her hand through her long tresses, is he the one, is he going to save me from the pain of having to live with that man? Is he going to bring me a shining light through the darkness? Various thoughts of such ran through her mind as she tried to calm her mind. She had witnessed Naruto's power firsthand, seen what it could do, watched what it had done, it was like looking at an invincible power that God deemed necessary for the world, but she couldn't bring to words or fathom it in any shape or form. Akano clearing her voice brought her out of her stupor and she shut the shower off and reached over the edge of the shower and grasped the towel that her friend had brought her to dry off. Doing so she then wrapped it around her luscious form and stepped out from behind the shower and looked to Naruto calmly sitting on the couch, please wear for just a moment while I compose myself, she requested from the blonde. Sure. Go ahead, the whiskered teen said politely. He wouldn't admit this aloud for fear of being called a perv, but she was so damn sexy, if only the towel would fall or snag on something, cause he wanted to see if the carpets matched the drapes. Okay, he didn't know where that came from, but it was best he ignored it for his own sanity's sake. Rias came back a couple of minutes later holding a hairbrush. Sorry for the inconvenience, but I figured that while Akano was getting you I could take some time to relax. A shower usually helps me calm down from a day of stress and it helps alleviate some of the darker thoughts that flood my mind, she said sitting beside him, uh, sorry to bother you with this, but could you perhaps help me brush my hair? I tend to miss some spots and usually have a Kano get them, but seeing as she is busy getting refreshments so I can explain why I have brought you here, I figured that I could do both things at once, she said honestly. Naruto shrugged, I wouldn't mind, but I don't think ITD do any good seeing as I am a cripple, he said motioning to his missing arm. It's all right, just do your best, I'll have Akano go over what you were unable to get using the brush, she said as she turned her back to him allowing him to start brushing her hair, so, Naruto-san, can you tell me anything about your life before coming to Kuo Academy? She asked trying to start a conversation with him. Not much to say honestly, I remember being engulfed by a flash of light. A brief flash of pain and then waking up in a hospital missing half an arm. I clearly remember being told by a doctor that I had been in a warehouse when it had exploded and lost my arm somewhere during this and a large eye beam fell on my arm and somehow got attached to the electrical feed and it began to filter into my body, it's a miracle I survived the damage if anything they said is true, he said looking at his bandaged arm, he usually kept it wrapped up so others didn't have to look at the grotesque scar tissue that covered his arm. He also was thankful that the uniform was long sleeve so he could hide the bandages too, Rhea sighed to herself, I see. It must have been hard for you, to wake up in such a condition, she said. I guess, but I would have at least wished to have kept my memories intact, he said. Yes, I heard that you had somehow lost your memories of the entirety of your life before you awoke in the hospital, the redhead agreed. Naruto nodded his head at her words, yeah, it's strange, I would have figured that I would have retained something, a fragment, a flash, something, but nothing. It does bother me at times, but at the rest of the time, it eases my worries because so far nobody has been rushing about calling out for me. So, has anything strange happened to you recently? She asked him. Not really, but there are the usual instances, he informed her. No, Naruto-san, that's not what I meant, have you had any strange recollections, dreams things like that? She asked. Oh, uh yeah, actually, as a matter of fact, I have recently, he told her. 
Could you tell me about them? She asked him, okay. So, a few weeks ago, I dreamt that I was walking home right, and so as I am doing this I pass this guy dressed as a priest and I greet him, you know a polite hello, how are you type greeting, this guy then proceeds to cuss and then pulls a gun out and then shoots me, after that, it gets a little blurry, but then as it begins to get dark for me, I see a brief glimpse of something red, he told her, and then after that, I wake up, he said honestly. Rias nodded her head, I see, she muttered, and if I were to tell you that all of that was real, she asked. I would ask how I am still alive after clearly being shot by a gun, he said to her. If I were to say magic, what would you respond with? I would say bullshit, and if it were still true? I'd call bullshit. And if you were given proof? I might be inclined to believe you. Okay, well, you are a devil, a newly reincarnated one, but still a devil, not just you, the rest of the O, R, C but I brought you back as a way to save your life, she said. Uh. Rias, I hate to point this out, but you lack several key traits that mark you as a devil, he responded as he continued to brush her hair. Oh, and what traits are those exactly? She asked giggling. For one, you don't have the red skin, two little black horns, or spiky tail and you don't have the evil pitchfork to go along with it, you don't sacrifice virgins or drink the blood of puppy dogs, I don't think my soul has been stolen so I've gotta say you're either a very young devil, or you play a good game, Naruto said. Rias burst into laughter, hard, belly busting, laughter, after taking a moment to compose herself, Rias cleared her throat and said, well, I am sorry to burst your bubble, but us devils look just as human as the next one, the only difference we have is our wings. Naruto nodded his head before he realized something, wings? Rias simply smirked a bit before she snapped her fingers and then there was a tearing sound before suddenly a pair of wings appeared behind Naruto, upon seeing the wings both Naruto and Rias were shocked, but for different reasons, Naruto was surprised to even see a pair of wings come out of his back, as he hadn't expected it. Rias, on the other hand, was shocked because of how his wings looked. They weren't like the normal black leather wings all devils have. Instead, Naruto's wings were white in color and came from the center of his back while they actually looked like bat wings with a bit of fur and a claw where the wing bends. Rias had never seen wings like this before or even heard of someone having a unique set of wings except for the Phoenix clan in the original Satan. The color would have been unique enough but to actually see him with such a unique set of wings as well was incredible. Having a unique set of wings or even them being different colors would have meant that he is incredibly powerful, since every devil, angel, and fallen that has an extra set of wings, means that they are at a new level of power, Rias thought as she felt Naruto finish brushing her hair and he proceeded to focus on his wings for a bit. Standing up, Rias moved to sit across from Naruto as he sat back on the couch and thought, but for him to have both, unique wings and have them be a different color means that he is going to be the strongest member of my peerage, now whether it comes entirely from him or his sacred gear is something that should hopefully be revealed in time, because if it had been just his sacred gear, then it should nt have required a mutated rook. As the two sat in silence, Rias looked over to Naruto's missing arm and couldn't help but frown at the fact that he was handicapped, she didn't like that he had to suffer being a handicap, or that he didn't even have memories of his past, making him just one large, hot mystery. Rias blinked in surprise, did I really just think he was hot? I mean I know he's attractive but I barely know him, plus, who knows if he would even like me, I mean we have only just met and the first thing I did was tell him he's no longer human and confirmed he had died, yeah, that the perfect foundation for a possible relationship, she thought while ending in sarcasm, underestimating her chances at a possible relationship. Um, Naruto began, getting Rias attention, is there something about my arm that interests you? cause you've kinda been staring at it for the past couple of minutes. Rias looked at him in slight surprise before she shook her head and said, no, nothing like that, it's just that I wish I had been there when you lost your arm since us devils have magic that can reattach an amputated limb so long as we react in time, though, your memories, I am sorry to say, that there isn't much I can do about that. Naruto was shocked that Rias was apologizing for his arm and memories, but surprised her when he began chuckling before full on laughing. Rias was shocked that Naruto had just suddenly begun laughing and was worried something was wrong. During this time, Akano had just returned with a pot of tea and some minor treats when she came across a laughing Naruto and a concerned Rias who seemed to have been trying to figure out what was going on. If it hadn't have been for the fact that she knew she was awake and that Naruto wasn't insane, she would have thought that she was dreaming. Clearing her throat, she got Rias' attention, and if it hadn't have been for the fact that Rias would use it against her, she would have moaned at the innocent look of confusion and desperation on Rias' face. What's going on Rias bucko? 
I left only for a few minutes to get refreshments and then I come back to see Naruto-kun laughing and you looking like you're on the verge of a heart attack," Akano said as she poured two cups of the black tea she had made, though she poured Naruto's into a cup of ice that had some lemon juice at the bottom since she felt he was more of an iced tea drinker. I I don't know. One minute, I am apologizing about losing his arm, and how we could have helped, and then the next thing I know, he just started laughing," Rias exclaimed, still very confused about what was going on. However, it was at this moment that Naruto finally started calming down as was breathing heavily before he reached over and grabbed his iced tea, taking a sip, Naruto held the cup as he gasped for air while leaning back, before sitting up as he looked at Rias and Akano with a smile, putting the cup down, he then wiped his eyes of some tears that were falling and said as he said, phew. Thank you for that. I haven't laughed that hard and I don't know how long, by the way. This is some very delicious tea Akano. How did you know I like iced black tea with lemon juice? Akano smiled brightly and said, I can usually tell what a person will like to drink, kind of like a sixth sense and it makes me very happy to hear that I got it right with you, Naruto-kun. Naruto smiled back and said, well, I am glad as well, since I don't think I've ever had a cup of iced black tea as delicious as this before. The two continued to smile at each other, with Rias noticing how much happier Akano seemed and how she didn't have as much of a mask as she did before, though while she was happy her friend was getting better. She felt a little left out and jealous with this whole happy, positive vibe they seemed to have, and were those sparkles she saw. Shaking her head, Rias began, Yes, thank you again Akano for the wonderful tea you make. Now, if you could sit down with us, we can quickly inform Naruto-kun about what being a devil means before we need to meet up with Sona and the others at the student council room. Akano nodded though, she was a little disappointed in Rias ruining such a good mood the two had but decided to put her feelings aside for the moment. Sitting beside Rias, Akano began, Well, Naruto-kun. Since you are a devil now, there are a few things that you need to know about. 1. As a devil, more specifically, a low-class devil. You need to do things such as delivering flyers and then granting wishes, now, these flyers, Akano held up one of the flyers that he recognized since he had gotten one before on the night he died, are what allows us to be summoned to a person to grant their request, now the type of request will depend on the person, but you are also allowed to choose which requests you accept and which you refuse since there are a lot of times when we are requested for some unsavory things. By, unsavory, do you mean like, killing a person, or asking to have sex and stuff like that? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow, he could see how summoning a devil would make someone think they could simply ask for something like that. Rias nodded and replied, yes, exactly like that, now we never accept a kill request because that is interfering with humans which we are not allowed to do, and as for the sex request. While it is true that you could refuse the request, it's honestly up to you whether you want to accept them or not, though it is looked down upon when one's status was gained by literally fucking their way to the top. Naruto snorted a bit as he held back his laughter when he heard Rias curse, as it was funny to hear one of the two great Oni sans of Kuo, curse like that out of the blue, Akano giggled, as she could understand why he was laughing and smiled as she had to admit, it would be kind of funny to hear either her or Rias suddenly begin cursing and using swear words. Rias, upon realizing why they laughing or trying to hold back their laughter, rolled her eyes, and said, oh how mature of you too, laughing because someone cursed a little bit. Naruto coughed as he got a hold of himself and said, it's not that, it's just that it's kind of funny to hear the one called, one of Kuo's great Oni-sans, suddenly curse out of nowhere, I just wasn't expecting it. Rias looked at Naruto for a moment before nodding her head as she continued, that's fine, but anyways, getting back on track, another thing you need to know about, our peerages, now usually, peerages are when a high-class devil, like me, is given the opportunity to go and recruit people to be their servants, however, unlike other people who usually treat their peerage like actual servants and force them to do things they don't want to, I treat my peerage like family. Naruto nodded his head, not seeing anything wrong so far, before allowing Rias to continue, also, once you, yourself, become a high-class devil, you will be allowed to gain your own peerage by using the evil pieces that we, devils, used to reincarnate someone as a devil, so if you ever wanted to say, get a group of only females, then you could do that if you wanted. Hum. I guess you have a point if I wanted to do that, but for now, I think I'll just wait until I get more acquainted and used to being a devil, Naruto replied, with Rias and Akano smiling at how he didn't want to rush getting to high class simply for a harem. Another thing is that we devils will be occasionally asked to go on hunts for what's known as stray devils, now these, are devils who have gone against their master in some manner and have run away from their king, for some reason. Now they could have killed another member of their peerage, or they could have simply deserted their master, 
doing either of these or anything in between that would wrong your master or the peerage would mark you as a stray from which you will be marked for termination. Rias explained in complete seriousness as she wanted Naruto to fully understand the consequences for becoming a stray. Naruto slightly gulped at the thought of being hunted but simply nodded his head in understanding. Rias sighed in relief before saying, one last thing. Since you are now a part of my peerage, in the future, when I am old enough to join, we well participate in something called raiding games, now, these raiding games are where two peerages face off in a sort of mock war with the goal being to either defeat all of the opponent's peerage members or to put them in a position where they have to forfeit. Raiding games are also used to solve arguments between two people or they can be used to gain prestige. Now, while it's used to increase your prestige, raiding games can also be used to allow sponsors, I guess you could say, to see what you're capable of and would decide if you should be of a higher rank or not, so if you were to ever show enough strength or prowess in a raiding game, you might be able to be promoted to a high-class devil much quicker, Rias said, with Naruto nodding before she quickly exclaimed, but. Even if you were to become a high class, you would still be a part of my peerage so if I am ever called into a raiding game, you would be allowed to fight with me if you wanted, of course, being a high class yourself, you would be allowed to deny coming to help, but it is a rule nonetheless that you would be able to come to help me. Naruto, Rias, and Akano sat in silence for a minute, as he absorbed all the information, from what he understood, there were several rules, most of which only seemed to be in favor of the high class devils, and he didn't like that, but that didn't mean that he would hold it against Rias since it isn't like she made the rules. Looking up, he said, it all sounds fairly straightforward, but it also sounds to mainly be in favor of the high class devils, since if it hadn't have been for you, I wouldn't know what a raiding game is, however, I want to promise you now, that if I ever were to become a high class devil, and you need help, I will always be there when you need me, and I never break my promises, so this is a promise of a lifetime. Rias suddenly squeaked out a sound as she sat up straight with a blush on her face from seeing the sheer determination on his face, she couldn't the blush because it had completely caught her off guard with how serious and attractive he looked. Rias quickly turned her head away to try and hide her blush while she cleared her throat and said, thank you Naruto-kun, now we should get going, you still need to meet the rest of your fellow peerage members, then you need to meet the other heiress who controls Kuo with me and her peerage, while we get you tested to see what your sacred gear is. As Rias spoke, she stood up with Naruto and Akano following her since they all finished their drinks before they left the orc, Naruto looked at Rias in confusion and said, what do you mean, other heiress? Is there another devil here who has a peerage like you? And what did you mean by sacred gear? As they entered the school Rias replied, yes, there is another devil like me who has her own peerage, and she and I are both in charge of watching over the town of Kuo, you know her as Suna Shitori, but her real name is Sona Sitri, and like me, she is next in line to become the clan head of her family, now, as for your sacred gear, what I mean is that you have an additional power within you, and you recent. Why unlocked it, however, because of how destructive it is, we need to have you scanned instead of trying to figure out what it is on our own, so, I had my brother call someone who can help us with figuring out what your sacred gear is called, and how powerful it is or potentially could be. Finally reaching the student council room, Rias knocked on the door and then entered once they heard a reply of, come in, entering inside, Rias said, hello Sona, Subaki, it's good to see you. Naruto then followed Akano as they entered and saw several people were inside. First, he saw Suna Shitori, or as he was told, Sona Sitri and her vice president, Subaki Shinra, both wore the standard Kuo Academy, female uniform which showed off Sona's B-cup breasts and her wide hips and Subaki's D-cup breasts and hourglass figure. Sona had black hair in a bob-cut hairstyle and violet eyes behind her glasses while Subaki had long, black hair that reached her knees and heterochromatic eyes with her left one being violet and her right one being brown. The next person was a girl, she was pretty small in height and she had white hair with cat hair clips and hazel eyes, she also wore the standard female uniform and had pale white skin, this was Kaneko Tezu, the one known as Kuo's mascot. The last person was a male with blonde hair and blue eyes like him, however, Naruto's hair was more sun-kissed blonde and his eyes were more cerulean while the boy was pale blonde and had grayish blue eyes, he wore the standard male uniform and had a beauty mark under his left eye, this was Kiba Yuto, the prince of Kuo. Everyone, this is my new, rook, Naruto Uzumaki, Rias introduced Naruto while getting everyone to look at him as he waved awkwardly, Rias then turned to Naruto and said, Naruto, these are some of your fellow peerage members, Kiba Yuto and Kaneko Tezu. The two nodded or waved at Naruto, and this is Sona Sitri, fellow heiress and the other devil who owns both a peerage and part the territory of Kuo with her, Queen, Tsubaki Shinra. I guess it's nice to officially meet you all for who you really are, Naruto said, 
Not sure how to respond since he knows everyone, he just didn't know they were devils. Sona moved towards Naruto and looked up at him since he was quite a bit taller than her with her standing at 5 feet and 5 inches when compared to his 6 feet 4 inches, this made Naruto the tallest person in the whole school, as well as the most well built in terms of his physique. Standing in front of Naruto, Sona said, It's nice to see you again, Uzumaki san, I hope you haven't been causing any trouble recently? Naruto rubbed the back of his head and said, Not that I can think of, though I am not sure if messing with the perverted trio counts as causing trouble since I am, technically, helping the school. He then gave Sona a look and said, And I thought I said not to call me by my last name and to just call me Naruto, or Naruto kun, you can even go with, as much as I still don't like it, Naruto san if you want. Everyone smiled or chuckled at Naruto's answer, as they knew he would never cause trouble if he couldn't help it and that him messing and torturing the perverted trio was doing the school a great service, though Sona did smile when she heard Naruto complain about her way of addressing him since he never did like formalities. Sona shook her head before saying, No, nothing like that, we're all simply here so that we can all be aware of what to expect from you and that sacred gear you seem to have, as for calling you by your first name, I don't think so. Naruto slumped at Sona's response concerning his name, getting everyone to laugh as they enjoyed the show while Sona hid a small smile that she had with only Rias and Tsubaki seeing it, though, upon seeing Sona's smile, while they were indeed happy she was finally relaxing and mellowing out, the two of them couldn't help but notice the slight tightening they felt in their chest but ignored it for now. Suddenly, there was a green flash of light as a magic circle appeared on the ground before it began to rise into the air while a person was seen appearing before the magic circle completely disappeared and a man was left standing in place of the magic circle. The guy had slicked back, green hair and light blue eyes, while he wore a forest green colored suit with brown dress shoes. This was the Satan Blue, Ajuka Beelzebub, and the creator of the evil peace system. Upon his arrival, all the devils, except Naruto, bowed while Rias and Sona stepped forward and said, it is good to see you, Lord Ajuka, and thank you for answering coming at our request. Ajuka looked at them with an easy-going smile and said, It's no trouble, I was looking for a reason to get out of my lab anyway. He then pulled out a device and said, Now, where is the one I am testing? Rias then gestured to Naruto and said, He's right here, Lord Ajuka, this is Naruto Uzumaki. Ajuka looked to Naruto with stars for eyes and before Naruto could say anything. He found himself strapped to a chair while Ajuka turned on the device, Naruto began to slightly panic since he didn't know who this person was and he was strapped to a chair while the guy started up a device that he had no clue as to how it worked, however, before he could go into a full-blown panic attack, he felt someone grab his hand and looked to see Akano holding his hand, smiling at him, and he smiled back as he began to calm down. Ria's smile began to strain a bit before she calmed down and said, You don't anything to worry about Naruto. Ajuka is just one for Thetrix, the device won't do anything, it's just going to scan you. Hearing this, Naruto sighed in relief while he began to relax and let Ajuka scan him, though, before long, everyone was surprised when the device began rapidly beeping before it began to crackle and smoke in Ajuka's hand. Everyone was shocked as Ajuka quickly turned the device off, but luckily, the device managed to give him the results. However, upon looking at the results, Ajuka's eyebrows furrowed in confusion as he said, This can't be right. Everyone was confused while Akano undid Naruto's restraints and Rias asked, What? What can't be right? Ajuka blinked before clearing his throat as he said, Well, it isn't public knowledge, but before God created the sacred gears. He made prototypes, however, before they became enemies. He worked with the original Satan in creating these prototypes, they decided to call them, Devil Fruits. These Devil Fruits used to focus on the more physical side of a person such as their stamina and their bodies themselves to use the various powers, like some held such control over fire, that the person themselves could turn into fire and be immune to any physical attacks or others could allow you to transform into various animals or mythical creatures. Everyone was surprised by the knowledge of these devil fruits but then Ajuka continued, however, all these devil fruits stood no chance against one specific fruit, this fruit was once wielded by a man who became known as the strongest man in the world and the one with the power to destroy the world. This shocked everyone as they had no idea that there used to be someone so powerful, but then Naruto couldn't help but ask, this is all very interesting but what does this have to do with me? Ajuka realizing he drawled on, shook his head and said, right, the reason I am bringing this up is because the fruit that person used, was called the Gura Gura no Mi or, when translated, the Quake Quake fruit, this fruit, was capable of creating shockwaves that devastated the land, tsunamis that flooded countries, and even, separating islands and continents, now, as for why this concerns you, young man, 
it's because your sacred gear is actually from that very fruit. Everyone's eyes widened as Naruto started saying, So, you're saying that I, Ajuka nodded and replied, Yes, young man, you hold the power of the Gura Gura no Mi within you. Everyone was shocked, but they knew that with this knowledge, now they can better prepare for the future, however, none of them were aware of all that was to come in the future, or the fact that outside the school, a pair of purple eyes were staring at Naruto while the owner thought, Finally, it's been thousands of years since God came to me, but now, I can finally get what I want. The owner looked into their hand where they looked at the fruit that they held, it was a round, orange fruit that was composed of many parts that looked to be little, flame shaped parts, it'll be meeting you soon, Naruto boy. The person thought before they seemed to shrink and disappear into a crowd, thanks for watching.